The Dubs dynasty was widely regarded as a thing of the past after Klay Thompson suffered a torn ACL, and after recovering from that, ruptured his Achilles, keeping him out for two consecutive years. No one thought a 32-year-old Klay would have any chance of becoming the player he once was again. Who could mentally recover from going through two dangerous major surgeries? How could he find his rhythm after missing two years in the NBA? Who could bounce back physically at his age from two typically career-altering setbacks? One of the greatest shooters to ever live has answered every one of those questions by stunningly re-implementing himself as a godly three-point marksman next to Stephen Curry, Draymond Green, and a revamped supporting cast. Displaying with a little hard work and perseverance, regaining full form after an injury is never impossible. 2022's playoffs have seen Thompson average a team's second best, only behind Curry, 19.8 points per game, on shooting splits of 46, 40, and 80, with a very solid true shooting mark of 58%. Thompson also showed why he made an all-defensive team three years ago, playing very solid defense on Luka. Clay's obviously a part of a powerhouse dubs attack, which just became the fifth team ever and the first in the modern era to make its sixth finals appearance over the span of eight seasons. As I mentioned two days ago in this upload, ESPN gave the dubs a 10% chance to make the finals three months ago. Injuries to Draymond and Curry throughout the year, along with Clay's rustiness, had people severely doubting this roster. So this video shows you the shocking revelation about the Golden State Warriors entering the finals. Before continuing, only 11.2% of you watching right now are subscribed, so if you haven't already, please subscribe and hit the bell so you don't miss a single upload. Also, please drop a thumbs up. It takes a few seconds and makes a massive difference in YouTube's algorithm. You can follow me on Instagram and Twitter at Hoops, and I'll follow you back. Link is down below in the description for those two platforms. After Luka hits Clay with a couple patented dribble combos, Thompson doesn't bite, pressing up on Doncic to force the drive, and desperately contesting Luka's savvy fadeaway, forcing the air ball. Not bad for a guy who said he couldn't even run at this time last year. Mavs players made just 22.6% of their shots overall and 13.3% of their three-pointers when defended by Clay. While Thompson showed off his overlooked perimeter defense against Dallas, on the other side of the court, Draymond displayed his underrated interior offense. Of course, the passing is always a staple, whether Green's the main facilitator in the Warriors' patented split action play, or if he's simply handsing it off and setting a screen for Steph. And this behind the back dime on the fast break shows off how complete of a playmaker that Draymond is. But Green averaged over 10 points per night in the Dallas series, and his aggressiveness finishing plays for himself, specifically in the closeout game five, was uncharacteristically on full display. Green finished with 17 points on seven shots. He was five of six on twos and knocked down the one and only three pointer he attempted, which all equated to an out of this world 97% true shooting mark. That was all while stuffing the stat sheet with a block, six rebounds, and nine assists. Watch the handle right here to get right past Maxi Kleba and keep it under control as a tough finish gets in the end one. Western Conference Finals MVP Stephen Curry is one of the players who keeps this system at the proficient level it performs at consistently. Steph's probably going to go down as the greatest point guard of all time when it's all said and done. That would have happened whether Golden State drafted him or not. Curry's responsible for being the perfectly lethal playmaking and sharpshooting number one option in basketball and the biggest part of Golden State's success without a doubt. He defines face of the franchise in every sense of the phrase. For a further breakdown on Steph, click on the video in the top right of your screen, which I posted a few days ago. Of course, we'll go more in depth on Curry in the near future on this channel. Transitioning up to the front office, where president of Ops and Bob Myers and previously hated owner in Joe Lacob don't get nearly enough credit for building up the Bay Area's NBA roster into a championship caliber team for a second time within a decade. After the torn ACL of Clay in the 2019 Finals against my Raptors, the departure of Kevin Durant the following summer, plus the early season wrist injury from Steph the next season, that must have shell-shocked Warrior fans who had to endear their team going through the worst season-to-season drop-off in wins of all time and their lowest win total in over 50 years, which says a lot considering how many times this team lost 20 or fewer games back in the 90s. Following that 15-win season in 2019-20, it's not like they had to fully rebuild. There were still hopes of the dynasty resuming, with Steph, Dre, and Clay 
all expected to be back for 2021. But even before the season began after the bubble, Clay was diagnosed with a ruptured Achilles, a tragic setback that had many declaring the end of the Dubs run of success. Little did they know the summer earlier, management stole an undervalued prospect out of Michigan in a shifty Steph Curry-esque combo guard, robbing Jordan Poole with the number 28 overall pick. Another move, which came midway through the 1920 season, was sending D'Angelo Russell to Minneapolis in exchange for a man who they expected to replace Kevin Durant on the wing with his two-way impact in Andrew Wiggins. Meanwhile, Steph's broken wrist was holding him back from stepping on the court, but the two-time league MVP would bounce back to have the best season of his career in 2021. He edged out Washington's Bradley Beal to win his third career scoring title, averaging an insane 32 points per night on shooting splits of nearly 50-40-90. My fellow Torontonian in Wiggins, the sophomore in JP, and the should-have-been third-time MVP in Steph were good enough to significantly improve the Warriors, but it still wasn't good enough to get them past the Memphis Grizzlies in the play-in. That, of course, led into last summer entering 21-22, which saw the Warriors acquire important floor-spacing shooters with great size on the free agent block, picking up Otto Porter Jr. and Nemanja Bjelica. But the most important free agent pickup ended up being the man who stole the 15th and final roster spot on this team from Avery Bradley, the son of an all-time great defender, and Gary Payton II. All year long, Gary's clamps resembled his all-time great defensive pops, and he earned the nickname of the 15th man for his inspirational journey onto the roster. GP2 had played four G League seasons, praying for an opportunity like the one he has right now, and it'll be great to see the Dubs' best guard defender get healthy for the finals, along with those off-season acquisitions. What really took the Warriors from a team that lost in the play-in to a top seed in the West was the internal development from Jordan Poole and Andrew Wiggins. JP became a most improved player of the year candidate, while the former number one pick in A. Wiggs did what fans in Minneapolis expected for years, as Maple Jordan shockingly morphed into an all-star starter. As I've said in the past, special things happen to players when they get comfortable in the Warrior organization, along with Steve Kerr's system. For that, all the credit in the world goes to the player development and, of course, coaching staff. The wins were flowing even at the very start of Klay Thompson's return, but the injury to Draymond in Clay's first game back ultimately ended up making the Warriors' defense much worse, and then the L's started to pile up. Despite Thompson averaging 20 points per game on 40% three-point shooting in his first year back, fans who doubted the Warriors used the fact that Golden State was barely a plus 500 team with Clay in the lineup to try and argue why the Dubs would be a first or second round exit. Really, the struggles came down to the injuries to Draymond and Steph. Steph's ankle injury directly before the postseason laid even more questions on the Warriors' chances at making a deep run, as Curry would miss a month with that setback. The Dubs continued to struggle, but did pull off a five-game winning streak without their best player to end the year. Then, thankfully for Dubs fans, they got the news that Curry would be making a timely return for Game 1 against Denver. A five-game series win against the Nuggets, a six-game drama-filled thriller against John Morant's Grizzlies, where despite getting down by 55 points in one game, they ultimately took care of business in six. Then an incredible 19-point Game 1 comeback against Dallas in the Conference Finals, and a five-game series win over Luka's Mavs leads us to the spot we're currently in. Golden State's Big 3 doesn't have their legacy on the line here. Rather, they have the task of cementing their dynasty amidst the greatest of all time. The shocking narrative that's arisen this year in the Bay Area is Klay Thompson bouncing back to full strength and adding yet another ball handler and marksman who can draw double teams while also being a top two-way player again. Reclaiming his title as one of the best two-way shooting guards in basketball, this roster now features a healthy Stephen Dre and two developed phenoms in Wiggs and JP, that makes Klay Thompson being himself again that much more terrifying for not just this year, but the next few for other teams in the West looking to advance to the finals. What are your predictions for the dubs in 2022's finals? Best answer down below in the comments gets next video shout out. Top 5 commenters by June 21st receive free NBA merchandise this summer, so leave your take on today's question to compete in Community Speaks. 
Shout out to Ken Saludo, who says, I'm picking the Celtics to win the Eastern Conference. As much as I love Jimmy and the Heat's persistence to win, what they did in Game 6 would be very difficult to duplicate two games in a row. Pause to read the rest of Ken's amazing answer. I hope you guys have a great one. Appreciate every answer. DFlow signing off.